bad audio can get in the way of good storytelling, especially when creating a podcast. Hey guys, my name is Dave Neal, host of the SAP Podcast, and I'm going to share with all of you my favorite equipment that I use in my home studio, which by the way, is also a kitchen. And if you can't tell, it's very echoey in here. You can probably hear the neighbors downstairs. It's super obnoxious. But with the right microphones, no one needs to know. When you're recording a podcast at home, you don't always have the ability to control the, su the surrounding noise. Like when my basset hound walks into the shot. You can hear that on a bad uh, microphone. But on a good microphone, it does a great job of isolating your audio and gets rid of the surrounding audio. And that's exactly what you need as a vehicle to get your story across to your listeners. In today's video, I'm gonna test these microphones under very loud conditions. I'm gonna fly a drone right over my head, which is super loud, it's super windy, and we're gonna see how these microphones perform. It's important to know that you can't always have the perfect conditions to record in. I record my podcast in the car, I've recorded it in bars, um, live events, and it's just very good to know that a dynamic microphone will isolate your audio and get rid of the surrounding noise. Now, a lot of people ask me how to start a podcast. Well. On the gear side, you don't need a crazy studio. You need a microphone, an XLR cord, plugged into a mixer, and right here, this is the H6 Zoom mixer. It's a mixer and audio recorder. What you can see on it right there is there's multiple dials, so you can plug in different microphones, turn the gain up to whatever level you want it to be. You can see right here, I'm kind of juggling this. If I turn it up too much, I'm going to be sounding louder. So you want to get it to the right point where it is not in the red. For this microphone, it's right on the four. Get it on that point, and then you record it. You check out your levels, you hit the red button, and then you record it. But for the most part, this is a one-stop shop for podcast recording. Now, when I bought this Zoom H6, it was $400. The price now is $330. There's a Zoom H4n. If you need less inputs, that's only like $200. So there's different price levels, but I'm not gonna recommend any other equipment because this is what I've used for the last five years. I've never even washed it. It's a little grimy, but it works every time. I've recorded thousands of hours of audio on this mixer. I'm gonna do a sound test of my three favorite microphones. We've got the Shure SM58, we've got the Behringer XM8500, and we have the Audio-Technica AT2020. These three microphones range from $23 to $99 and $99. Let's see if we can hear the difference. Well, this is a mic check right now, mic check that we're doing here with the Behringer microphone. This is a $20 microphone. It's called a Behringer XM8500. I've had this for about five years, very durable. Um, again, $20 for this microphone right here. Now over here, we have the Shure SM58. This is the industry standard Shure SM58. This comes with a switch on and off or just one that's uh, without a switch. I prefer no switch. You don't want to mess things up while you're recording. Uh, this is great. You can hold these microphones in your hand. They do just fine in your hand, so you don't even need a mic stand for them. Can you tell the difference when I'm talking into the Behringer Ultra Voice XM8500 versus the Shure SM58? This is a dynamic microphone. You can play these with a lot of noise in the background. Not a big deal. Can you tell the difference? $100, $20, 100 minus 80 equals $20. This is a $20 microphone. This is a great place to start if you need a microphone. You're going to get those plosive sounds, those popping noises, popcorn, pippity pop. I feel like the Shure SM58 might be a little better with plosive sounds, but either way, you know, you don't need to stand too close to the microphone, but uh, you can hold on to these. They don't make too much noise. I mean, sure, if you're a nut and you're doing this when you're podcasting, $20, $100, which one do you want? They say the Shure SM58s are just super durable, but what are we doing? We're podcasting, you know what I mean? We're not out here having a rock show. There's no drop the mic moment. We're not doing open mic at, uh, you know, hip hop night at the Apollo. Uh, in which case, I would get the Shure SM58 because this mic can take a beating. You can see there's dents in it. 
I've got, uh, I mean, these things, you know, once in a while they fall down, but we're not rock stars, you know? Okay, the next microphone we're testing out is the Audio Technica AT2020. I'm doing it with this pop filter so you can hear those plosive sounds. Uh, the Audio Technica AT2020. This also is a $100 microphone. I'm using it right now with the air conditioning blowing in the background. So um, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but uh, this microphone is better served in a room that's a, a more acoustically friendly for. For your podcast. Uh, right now we're in a kitchen with tile floors and, uh, you know, uh, junky windows that, um, you know, thin window panes. So this microphone, I usually only use it for voiceover work or um, straight to camera things. Um, very simple stuff. When I'm recording with multiple people, I try to keep it to the Behringer 8500 or the Shure SM58. But again, it's uh, it's it's not um, it's not a bad microphone. This microphone, I'm going to turn it down a little bit actually. This microphone requires phantom power, which means you need a ghost to plug it in for you. Phantom power, uh, you can turn it on on the um, on the Zoom H6. It's super easy. It adds a little bit of a boost, and uh, I think this microphone's better if you're trying to get a little bit more of a bass uh, in a in a more round kind of sound to you. The next thing I'm going to do is a sound test. Okay, folks, we're going to test these microphones out in very loud conditions. All right, so let's see how this all sounds. I'm going to fly a drone. Um, you shouldn't do this indoors. I think it's a bad idea, but I'm going to fly this drone and um, let's see how loud it gets in here. Okay, so we're ready to go. Let's take this puppy off. And, um, very loud right now. You can hear that. Very nice. I can just move it backwards a little bit. There we go, and um, I'm with the Shure XM58 right now, recording with some background drone noise. How does it sound? Not too shabby, right? Now I'm recording with the uh, now I'm recording with the Audio Technica AT2020 condenser microphone, recording with a drone right in front of our face. How does that sound? Drones. Uh, let's see if we can change the. Uh Light it up in here. Oh, that's nice. I just lit it, lit it up. Let's see if we can move this drone a little bit. Raise it up a little bit. There it is. That's the spot. Oh, yeah, that's nice. So how does it sound? Not too bad. Now let's record. Here we are with the Behringer XM8500 Ultra Voice microphone, the $20 microphone with the drone flying indoors. It's loud, it's proud, and it's a Behringer XM8500. I feel like this one doesn't... St it's pretty loud, right? I feel like this doesn't stand too much of a chance. Is it picking up any of that noise? We'll hear it in post, but right now it's very loud in here, and this is, yeah, yeah I don't expect anyone to be flying a drone uh, while they record a podcast, but we're just trying to let you guys hear how these microphones do in loud conditions. How does that sound? Uh, this, test was brought, this test was brought to you by the Mavic Mini, DJI's newest product, ultralight 249 grams. So you don't even need to get a license to operate one of these. Oh, look at that. That's not too bad. Again, a selfie video right here with the Mavic Mini, the newest... The Mavic Mini, the newest member of the DJI drone family. I'll be flying this thing all around town. Not too bad. All right, for my final sound test, hold on. All right, my dog hates this one, but for my final sound test, I'm going to be using my Dyson vacuum right now, and we'll see how this all sounds. I feel like it's not going to be too good for the microphone right now. But of course, let's try it with the Shure SM58. So we're recording right now with the Shure SM58. And I assure you that this vacuum is very loud right now. I feel like the other mics don't stand a chance. This is the Behringer XM8500, the $20 microphone. We're using the $20 microphone right now. And we're cleaning the table. It's going very nice. And then I'm sure this is not going to be a good one, but let's try it anyway. So we're recording right now. <laughs> Very windy conditions we have here. I feel like a weatherman in Florida. Oh, the hurricanes are getting a little out of control here. Anyway, I got a clean desk. 
final thing I wanted to review is these mic stands, okay? These are great mic stands. I'm going to list all of this in the description, but this mic stand is made by ProLine. It's called a Desk Boom Mic Stand. The thing I like about this mic stand is you can adjust it. It's got a very heavy, I mean, it's a very heavy base, so you don't have to screw it into anything. There it is, ready to go. Not a bad thing. It can be out of your way, and uh, this, is a gr this is my favorite mic stand in the world. I love it. The next mic stand, this is called On Stage Stands. These are simple, I got it at Guitar Center. You can lift it up here, you can be over here with it. These are desktop mic stands. These are meant for sitting on a table. If you're doing a podcast where you wanna hang out on the couch, just grab the mic and hang out on the couch. These mics are great. It's not gonna be too much interference. You don't need to wear Michael Jackson gloves. And then lastly is this um, standard um, stand-up comedy. You know what I mean? There it is. I kind of like using this one because a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just like use it, you know, and just kind of, you can move it. It's just there with you. It's just, it's, uh, you know, it's not too fancy and you can just, uh, it becomes a one with the body, if you know what I mean. So those are your options. Um, by, by all means, stay away from the dinky mic stands. I, mean, I couldn't give this away. I bought this once. I don't know how much it was, 10, 15 bucks, but it's like, okay. Okay. So let's try this out, right? Cool. So now I got to bend over like this. Hunchback of Notre Dame is probably the only person who actually enjoyed one of these. I mean, you know, can you go up a little bit? I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. So that's as high as it goes. So what are we doing here? Unless I'm, and unless I'm like podcasting from some high up desk, this I've literally haven't used this in years. If anyone wants it and lives in Los Angeles, let me know. It's a gift. I'll give it to you. Um, it's cool. I guess you can travel with it. But my thing is when I travel, I just don't bring mic stands. I don't. We do, we do car casts where we podcast in the car on long road trips. You hold a mic like you're talking to somebody. I don't know. Would you pass the uh, driver's test at the DMV? Maybe not. But is it illegal? I don't know. Could you get pulled over? Probably. But uh, in the end, keep your eyes on the road. Have a conversation with your friends. It picks up everything. I'll leave a. I'll show you guys a clip of, of some car cast episodes I've done where we're literally just driving in the car and we and the car is actually pretty acoustically sound when you think about it. Um, and it's there's a little bit of a slight background noise, but most people are listening while they're driving in a car, so they can't even tell the difference. If you you know what I mean? You know what I mean? To be honest, you, speaking about the drone, you, I think you're surprised at my piloting capabilities. Yeah, to be honest, I was really very impressed by how quickly you learned that controller. But I always tell people, look, if you're going to be starting a podcast, you need to know that two things. Uh, if people listen and it's bad audio, they're going to tune out immediately. Know your audio, which is why I like to use this stereo headphone amplifier because it lets me get a more accurate sound of what's going to be coming out. Listen, people, this this costs a couple bucks. This is uh, one of those, uh, you know, you can plug these in and hook up multiple headphones to them. I used this for a couple of years and I'm telling you, yeah, use it on road trips. Use it when, when you don't have a power source, sure. But it's, it's breaking up the quality of the actual sound. So a lot of times what we would do is we would boost the gain so we could hear ourselves through this bad headset and next thing you know when you actually listen to the recording you're peaking it doesn't sound right you need to get in there on the right sound and you can do that with a nice channel amplifier again these channel amplifiers cost 20 bucks so not bad so right now you want to do a solo podcast on the cheap with my setup you've got a 330 dollars zoom h6 you've got a 20 dollars behringer a doodad four channel stereo headphone amplifier and a twenty dollar microphone. And these cords, you can get a good, you can get an okay XLR cord for about ten dollars. These are forty dollar cords. They're much nicer. Livewire, Elite. These things, you know, I don't know. These, these, I don't know. Maybe I got ripped off. Um, Oxygen free copper. I don't know what that means. You know what I mean? But um, they sold me on it, and it's gonna, you know, help reduce some of the, you know. Um, I don't even know. Maybe I did get ripped off. Uh, but yeah, if you don't want any of this, you can also just do a podcast where you talk directly into your sound right here change the gain right there you just turn the gain just you just turns the gain right there and it changes the whole thing ladies and gentlemen boys and girls welcome to fenway park that ain't bad but who the heck wants to hold one of these up you know but sometimes you might be able to just throw this on the table and you might want to throw the gain up and then this is the podcast but is this really how you want it to sound i don't think so um but it's there in a bind and it works and what I love about the H6, you know, for me, I do stand-up comedy. I can take this to a comedy club and I can have the mixer from the stage plugged right into here and I can use this just as a recorder. It's a recorder, it's a mixer, and it's got the um, color LED 
plate right here so you can actually make sure you're not peeking. That was my demonstration. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you liked this uh, product demonstration, let me know and I'll do one because I, uh, I got a whole bunch of info on different cameras and lighting equipment that you can use if you're trying to make your um, podcast um, video friendly. Uh, why am I talking to this one? It feels kind of messy. There's a helicopter on the desktop. I got cords plugged in everywhere. I'm gonna break this all down in the description. I'm gonna, so you can actually click on the Amazon affiliate links that I have. Uh, full disclosure, I get a percentage of anything you guys buy, but you don't have to pay any extra. You're just helping me out. If any of these products you liked, I'll leave the, <laughs> I'll leave the drone in there too, because I love this thing. If you guys need a drone, oh my gosh, this is amazing. You saw how good that is. The image quality is fantastic on it too. You can just hover right there. I'm so glad my fiance didn't walk in when I was doing that. She'd be like, why the heck are you flying the drone inside? She doesn't talk like that. It just sounds that way, the way I hear it. Um, anyway, uh, let me know what you guys think.